Standard Policy Provisions Though minimum standards can vary by state and differ in name by insurer, the provisions covered in this lesson are found in just about every type of life insurance policy. Specific regulations for your state are covered in the State Life Insurance Law section of this course. Standard Life Policy Provisions The provisions covered in this lesson are presented in the order they are typically found in a life insurance policy. Title Page The title page or specifications page of the policy identifies the insurance company and the insured. Insuring Clause The Insuring Clause which describes the basic agreement between the insured and the insurer, is found on the Schedule of Benefits page. The insuring clause states the company's promise to pay the policy's face amount, death benefit, to the named beneficiary if the insured dies while the policy is in force. Example A typical insuring clause reads, The company will pay to the beneficiary, upon receipt of due proof of the death of the insured, the insurance in force at his or her death subject to the provisions of this policy. Entire Contract The entire contract provision states that the insurance policy and the completed, signed, application make up the entire contract. A copy of the application is attached to the policy. It also states that all attached riders are part of the contract. This provision also states that no change or waiver of any policy provision can be made unless it is agreed to and signed by an executive officer of the insurance company. Ownership Rights A life insurance policy is property, giving policy owners important ownership rights. A life insurance policy's ownership provision establishes the rights of the policy owner and the conditions under which those rights can be exercised, including the right to Transfer policy ownership to another person or entity, without regard for insurable interest. Assign, pledge, the policy's values as loan collateral. Select and change modes of premium payment. Select and change beneficiaries, only if the existing designation is revocable. Terminate the policy and elect settlement and non-forfeiture options. Receive cash values and or dividends. Borrow against the cash value. Assignment. Policy owners have the right to transfer ownership of a life insurance policy, either permanently or temporarily, through an assignment. There are two types of assignments. Absolute assignment. Collateral assignment. A policy may be assigned only if the beneficiary designation is revocable. Assignments are not permitted if the beneficiary designation is irrevocable. Absolute assignment. An absolute assignment occurs when the policy owner permanently transfers, by gift or sale, all rights in the policy to another person or entity, called the assignee. The assignee becomes the policy owner and assumes full responsibility for policy maintenance, including premium payments. Collateral Assignment A collateral assignment is a temporary assignment that uses the policy as collateral for a loan between the policy owner and the lender. With a collateral assignment, the policy owner does not transfer all rights in the policy, but makes an assignment of the policy's cash value only to the extent necessary to secure the loan. The policy owner retains most rights in the contract and remains responsible for premium payments. However, the policy owner can neither surrender the policy nor take any other action that jeopardizes the rights of the collateral assignee. If the policy owner dies, the assignee is paid, from the death proceeds, the balance of the loan still owed. The rest of the death benefit is paid to the beneficiary. The collateral assignee's rights in the policy end when the loan is paid off. Consideration The consideration clause states that the applicant's consideration, one of the three basic elements of a legal contract, consists of both assigned application and payment of the first premium. Contract Modifications The contract modifications section identifies changes that may be made without having to write a new policy. Beneficiary Changes If beneficiaries have not been designated irrevocable. Changes to the face amount if the policy type allows this. Changes in the settlement option by which the policy's death benefit is paid out. Changes in the mode of premium payment, from monthly to quarterly or annually, for example. All changes to a life insurance contract must be made in writing, and an insurance company officer must endorse the change document before it becomes effective. Agents do not have the authority to endorse a contract modification. 
Right to examine. Free look. All insurance policies include a right to examine, free look, provision, which gives new policy owner some time, usually 10 days, to review the policy and decide whether to keep it. The free look period begins when the policy is delivered to the owner. Policy owners who are not satisfied for any reason can return the policy for a refund of all amounts paid, including premium deposit and fees. As with all standard policy provisions, the required free look period may vary by state. Some states require a 30-day free look period for senior applicants, usually age 65 and older. While 10 days is the standard life insurance free look period, variable life insurance policies usually have a free look period that is the later of 10 days from policy delivery or 45 days from when the application was completed and signed. Free look period and replacement. While 10 days is the shortest free look period permitted in any state, some states require a longer free look period typically 30 days, when the new life insurance policy is replacing an existing one. Depending on the state, a policy owner who cancels a life insurance policy that replaced an existing policy may be entitled to receive a refund of the full premium paid and or an amount equal to the cash surrender value transferred into the new policy plus all fees and other charges deducted from gross considerations or imposed under the policy or contract. Payment of premiums. The different ways policy owners may pay their policy premiums is outlined in the payment of premiums provision, which defines available premium modes, the payment schedule, grace period, automatic premium loan, whether the premium is fixed or flexible, modes of premium payment. A life insurance policy schedule page normally identifies the amount of the modal premiums. The most common premium payment modes are monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually. All premiums are due at the start of the modal period. When premiums are paid more frequently than once a year, an additional charge is added to cover the insurer's lost interest and added costs of processing additional premium payments. Example. The sum of 12 monthly premiums is usually around 5% greater than a single annual premium that is paid at the start of the policy year. Grace period. Whether term or permanent, all life insurance policies are non-cancelable if premiums are paid on time. To prevent unintended policy lapses due to a simple oversight, all insurance policies include a premium grace period. A policy will not lapse if an overdue premium is paid during the grace period which is typically 31 days following the premium due date. The policy remains in force during the grace period. If the insured dies during the grace period, unpaid premiums are deducted from the death benefit proceeds. Policy lapse and non-forfeiture options. If premiums are not paid by the end of the grace period, the policy will lapse and insurance protection will end. If the policy was term life insurance, no further benefits are available. If the policy was any form of permanent life insurance, the policy's cash value is either distributed in cash or used to purchase coverage on a reduced basis through one of two non-forfeiture options. Paid up permanent insurance. Cash value purchases a single premium policy of the same type but with a reduced face amount. Extended term insurance. Cash value purchases a term life policy of the same face amount providing coverage for a limited time. Policy reinstatement. Life insurance policies include a reinstatement provision that lets the policy owner reactivate a lapsed policy if done within a specified period. This period may be up to five years or longer following the lapse depending on the insurer and state law. To reinstate a lapsed policy, the policy owner must provide all of the following. A written request or application for reinstatement. Proof of insurability. Payment of all back premiums plus interest. The original issue age is retained in the reinstated policy, and policy premiums remain unchanged from the original premiums. Key point. Reinstatement is not possible if the policy has been surrendered and the cash value has been paid to the policy owner. Incontestability. The incontestability provision states that after a policy has been in force for a certain period, usually two years, the insurer cannot contest a claim for any reason except for non-payment of premiums. In other words, 
The policy becomes incontestable after it has been in effect for two years. Misrepresentations discovered by the insurer within the two-year contestability period may be grounds for voiding the contract if deemed material to the policy. A misrepresentation is material if it affects the decision the insurer would have taken in underwriting the policy. Misstatement of age or sex. Misstating the age or sex of the insured on a life insurance application is not considered a material misrepresentation. It is not grounds for voiding the policy, even if the misstatement is discovered during the contestability period. If such a misstatement of age or sex is discovered, the insurer has the right to adjust the policy's benefits to reflect the true facts and the premiums paid. This can be done at any time, even if it is beyond the two-year contestability period. Example. If an insurer discovers that an insured's age or sex was misstated, it will adjust the policy's face amount to match the premium being paid with the correct age or sex. If the insured is actually older, age was understated, the face amount will be decreased. If the insured is actually younger, age was overstated, the face amount will be increased. If the sex was misstated, the face amount will be adjusted up if the insured is actually female and down if the insured is actually male. Payment of Claims All life insurance policies contain a provision that defines how and when death benefit proceeds are to be paid out and the requirements to initiate a death benefit claim. Payment of a claim requires four things. A policy in force at the time of death. Proof that the insured died. No evidence that the insured died from an activity excluded in the policy. A designated beneficiary. The policy owner has the right to choose the settlement option under which the death benefit is paid out. This decision can be left to the beneficiary. Interest on proceeds left with the insurer. Claim payment provisions usually state that any death benefit proceeds left with the insurer, either while the claim is being settled or as part of a settlement option, will earn interest. Medical examinations and autopsy. Some states require that life insurance policies include a provision defining the insurer's right to examine a deceased insured if the insurer determines it is needed when a claim is pending. Request an autopsy upon the death of the insured where it is not prohibited by law. For your review. The insuring clause states the company's promise to pay the policy's face amount, death benefit, to the named beneficiary if the insured dies while the policy is in force. The entire contract provision states that the insurance policy and the completed, signed, application make up the entire contract. A policy may be assigned only if the beneficiary designation is revocable. Absolute assignments are permanent, collateral assignments are temporary. The free look period, typically 10 days, but longer for variable life insurance, begins when the policy is delivered to the owner. Whether term or permanent, all life insurance policies are non-cancelable if premiums are paid on time. Policies will lapse if the premium is not paid by the end of the grace period. Lapsed, but not surrendered, policies may be reinstated if certain conditions are met, for example, evidence of insurability is provided and back premiums with interest are paid. Life insurance policies are generally incontestable after two years. Please pause. These end of lesson videos are intended to help you zero in on key topics that will help you make sense uh, of each lesson and to help you better understand the topics that are going to be covered on your uh, licensing exam. One topic in general that is going to be covered on your exam and is important for you to understand in your career is how the policy works. And the best way to understand how a life insurance policy works is to take a look at a policy and look at the policy provisions, which are covered in this lesson. Uh, I want to just talk uh, about a couple of provisions in particular to make sure that we really get a good understanding of, of how they work and, and how they come together. One of them has to do with beneficiaries. Uh, if you take a look at a, at a life insurance policy, uh, I have one here. Uh, just take a look and, and see what it says about the owner and the beneficiary. Uh, the beneficiary is named in the application. That's a part of the pro uh, process of filling out an application is naming the beneficiary. Uh, the beneficiary can be changed from time to time. That is a right of ownership, is the ability to change the beneficiary. Uh, the beneficiary has no rights in the policy until the death of the insured. Very important point. 
Uh, an individual must survive the insured to qualify as a beneficiary. One thing that isn't said here, but is a right of ownership, is the ability to designate whether that beneficiary is revocable or irrevocable. That's an important distinction to understand, especially for the insurance licensing exam. From, for the most part, an owner will want to designate the beneficiary as revocable, which means that the owner has the right to change that beneficiary designation without the beneficiary's permission. The other oppor uh, uh, opportunity would be to designate it as an irrevocable beneficiary. Now, designating somebody as an irrevocable beneficiary effectively takes away one of the rights of policy ownership, which is, again, the ability to change the beneficiary. Because when a beneficiary is designated as irrevocable, that's it. The owner cannot change the beneficiary designation or really even assign the policy to somebody else without that beneficiary's permission. So as you can see, it's a big important decision to name somebody as an irrevocable beneficiary. Normally you wouldn't see that done unless it was done as some kind of a, a court proceeding, maybe in conjunction with a divorce proceeding or something like that. The other topic that is covered in the lesson I want to just take a moment to talk about is the process of backdating. Now backdating is on the surface, simple to understand. It's establishing an effective date of the policy that is prior to the signing of the application. Now, most insurance companies allow a policy to be backdated up to six months. But what's the purpose for doing that? The purpose for doing a backdating is simply to reduce the age, the issue age of the policy by one year. Uh, most insurance policies are written so that six months before or after the individual's actual birth date is considered their insurance age. So if you can go back to one age younger, then the, the policy owner will effectively pay a premium that is a little bit lower than what they would have paid had the policy been issued on the date the application was written. It doesn't sound like much, but over years, that little difference can make, make a big difference. Now, one thing that must be considered when you do backdate a policy, and that is that because the policy coverage is being backdated up to six months, the insurance company is entitled to premium for that coverage period. So when you do backdate a policy, the, the applicant has to understand there will be some additional premium needed up front to cover that backdated period, but once issued, the policy will have a premium that is one year less in amount, you might say, than it would otherwise be the case. Okay, so here is our questions for this lesson. Which of the following statements correctly describes the relationship between the applicant and insurance contract? Application is not part of the contract, and once the policy is issued, nothing can be used to void the contract. The application is not part of the contract, but statements made on it can be used to void the contract if they are found to be misrepresentative. That's my final answer, and I'm going with it. All right, if an applicant for life insurance unintentionally misstates her age, what will the insurer do if they discover at the end of the contestability period their insurance will adjust the issue date, the insurance will recalculate the death benefit, um, Uh, that's what I'm guessing there. All right, if an insured dies during their life insurance policy grace period without having paid the premium, what is the insurance, uh, insurance company's obligation? Um, I don't know if they, I know they pay something. I don't know if it's the full amount or only the cash surrender or the premiums. I don't know. We'll find out in a few minutes. So we'll see if I'm right or wrong. In a collateral assignment, policy owners may do all the following except. Um, change beneficiaries, maybe? All right, let's see. I don't feel confident. I got two right. Two right and two wrong. Okay. So the application is part of the entire contract. So that's something new. I did not know that. Okay, so that's the correct answer there. Relationship between the application and insurance contract. Got this one right. If they mistake their age, 
Insurer will recalculate the death benefit. And this one also, um, the grace period. This was a total guess, too. So. The insurer will pay the death benefit after deducting the unpaid premium and any, any unpaid policy loans. After, after first deducting the unpaid premium and any unpaid policy loans. Okay. And I don't know if it's canceled after that or they keep doing it. I don't know. In a, I guess it's canceled, right? I don't know. In a collateral assignment, policy holders may do the following except surrender the policy. Okay, they cannot surrender the policy in a collateral assignment. Okay, this one was another long one. So if you stay stuck with me till the end, I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one.